pursuits are dangerous for everyone involved, and that's because when worst case scenario happens, the consequences can be deadly. <laughs> are seven crazy police chases that could have ended someone's life. Be 21-year-old roommates Corey Mercier and Trenton Johnson, who on February the 7th of 2024 led police on a chase through eastern Oklahoma over into Springdale, Arkansas. The duo were riding in a stolen U-Haul van, and Corey, the alleged driver, reached speeds of up to 120 miles per hour at some points during the chase. Officer was able to successfully pit the U-Haul, but the momentum caused the cruiser to swerve out of control and flip over several times before coming to a rest on the side of the road. Meanwhile, the U-Haul was still upright and attempting to flee.
While the officer was transported to the hospital with minor injuries, Corey and Trenton were transported to the Benton County Detention Center. Inside the back of the U-Haul, officers found firearms and Molotov cocktails. Initial conversations with them were that they were headed back to Michigan, and as for why and how they were going to use those firearms and Molotov cocktails, they couldn't think of a legitimate reason. They were both charged with felony fleeing and eluding, aggravated assault, possession of destructive devices, and criminal conspiracy, and each of their bail was set at $100,000. Oh, and they also face felony charges in their home state of Michigan. A vehicle flip is a terrifying experience under normal circumstances, but imagine flipping your vehicle vertically instead of horizontally. Right on. on July the 11th of 2024, an officer performed a traffic stop on a vehicle being driven by 51-year-old Eric Bernard Jones. After running Eric's information, the officer found out that his license was suspended, and that's when the encounter went south. South Carolina 28 is 602 Alpha Golf Romeo, 602 AGR. 20 is going to be at Chester Hospital. Hey, we're going on, boss. Go ahead and step out of the car for me. Okay. Hold on for a minute, man. Damn. Let me roll my window. Man, let me roll my window. I got to shut it and roll the window. Come on. Man, come on, man. 85 miles an hour. Still on. The bypass. Right on, Bastard Street, heading towards town. 1050. After swerving into a ditch and flipping over the nose of his truck, Eric was immediately arrested and transported to the hospital with minor injuries. His truck was subsequently searched, and what the officers found inside explained why Eric chose to run. 112 grams of fentanyl, 56 grams of meth, and over $4,000 in cash with some unidentified pills. Sheriff Max Dorsey released a statement hours later advising that he was taking the situation very seriously. Considering the two milligrams of fentanyl equates to a potential deadly dose, the amount that was seized during the traffic stop was estimated to be the equivalent of nearly 56,000 deadly doses. That's one fatal dose for nearly twice the number of citizens in Chester County. Eric was ultimately charged with driving under suspension, third or subsequent offense, failure to stop for blue lights, trafficking fentanyl, 28 grams or more, trafficking methamphetamine, 28 grams or more, and possession with intent to distribute schedule one to three drugs. Eric should just be thankful to walk away from that crash, but crashing didn't stop the next suspect, who proceeded to jump into a lake to get away from police. <laughs> On May the 9th of 2024, police received a call from the Honda of South Miami dealership informing them that a customer had just left with an unpurchased 2024 Honda Civic. The suspect, identified as 27-year-old Melina Logan, had come to test drive, but as soon as the employee got out of the car, she took that opportunity to speed away. Police were able to locate her a short while later, speeding along State Route 826. I'm behind it, I'm behind it. 56 and behind it, South Route 826.
Upon entering the exit ramp, Melina was met with standstill traffic and rammed into three stop vehicles, but still determined to get away. She took it to the extreme, jumping over the edge of the low bridge and plunging into the lake below. Officers threw down ropes so she could climb back up, but she refused, and they ended up having to dive into the water to retrieve her. She viciously fought them off, scratching one officer on the face and briefly holding another underwater before being taken into custody. She was then booked into the Miami-Dade jail on several charges, including grand theft of a vehicle, fleeing and eluding, leaving the scene of a crash, resisting arrest, and two counts of battery on a police officer. And that might be wild, but jumping into a lake is still not as extreme as going nearly 120 miles per hour in an attempt to outrun the police. <laughs> On April the 6th of 2024, an officer was traveling on Sherman Way and stopped at an intersection beside a 2019 Lamborghini Huracan. However, he looked over and saw that the driver of the Lamborghini, 51-year-old Elliot Dugan, was fast asleep. The officer then repositioned his cruiser behind Elliot's car, during which time he must have woken up as he took off moments later. Sleep at the light. Uh, I, I was right next to you. I put my spotlight on you, man. You were asleep at the light. Do you have anything out here? Yeah. Okay, cool. And do you have registration for the vehicle? Is this vehicle yours, sir? It's what? A rental? Oh, okay. Perfect. Where are you headed to? Home. Where's home? Where's home? Oh, okay. right here. Alright, just in reality, the car was stolen and Elliot had multiple felony warrants, and it only took the officer a few minutes to look all of it up, of course, and he promptly returns to the vehicle to order Elliot out. Hey, sir. Can you do a favor? Can you sit by the car for me? What's car? I just need to verify your license, man. That's it. I need to verify it. I need you to step out of the car for me, okay? I understand that. I need you to step out of the car for me. Sir, I understand that. I need you to step out of the car for me. You gave me a different thing. What is that one? Which license catch you that one? Okay, let me see that one. Okay, regardless, I need you to step out of the car. Sir, I need you to step out of the car right now. I'll explain in a second. I need you to step out of the car right now. You're being detained. Okay. 
We have the right to pull anyone out of the vehicle uh, because I understand that. What did I do though? So, you can tell me. That's not wrong. Sir. Yeah, because why? You want like to just find you want to the way you want to go. I will tell you once you're out of the vehicle. I understand that, and I know the law as well. I need you out of the vehicle first, please. No, I'll have to get out of the vehicle first. Yeah, I'll tell you. First. Sir. Tell you I understand that, and I do too. Sir, okay. I, I need you to come out of the vehicle, okay? I understand that. I need you to come out of the vehicle right now. So you tell me, I know the law. Okay, I know the law as well. Look, we're, we're going to go back and forth. This I have a bunch of units responding. This is a regular traffic stop, traffic stop, right? This was a regular traffic stop, and it turned into something else. What is it? This vehicle is stolen. I need you to come out of the car. This, this, this no, vehicle that no. you're driving is stolen. I rented this vehicle, so. Okay, I need you to step out of the vehicle. I really just did it. Okay, well, we need to double check and verify things, but I need you out of the vehicle. It is stolen. Hey, hey, stop! Elliot then took off and proceeded to speed down the road at over 100 miles per hour, and within a few seconds he had lost control of the vehicle, striking several other cars and trees before landing in a median. <laughs> Let me have the frequency. Vehicle is TC, uh, major TC damage. And let me get an RA starting to roll. I need be, uh, traffic shut down for westbound traffic on Sherman Way. And I can't tell you. No, I can't tell, but this is the other half of the car. Medics arrived soon after and Elliot was pronounced dead at the scene. The incident is still currently under investigation. 
That case was over in a matter of seconds, but this next suspect took police on an insane chase through Seattle while they fought for over 10 minutes to stop him. On November the 22nd of 2023, police located a stolen vehicle that was suspected of being involved in both a drive-by shooting and a burglary. But as an officer made a U-turn to apprehend the vehicle, the 32-year-old driver then sped away. The suspect led police on a dramatic 12-minute chase, weaving in and out of traffic and up onto sidewalks until an officer was able to successfully pit the vehicle and bring the chase to an end. Also inside the vehicle were a woman and three dogs who were released at the scene and multiple firearms. The suspect was subsequently transported to the King County Jail and charged with attempting to elude a pursuing police vehicle with an endangerment enhancement, possession of a stolen vehicle, and second-degree unlawful possession of a firearm. Fortunately, no officers were hurt during that stunt, but we cannot say the same for the next case, where an officer plowed directly into the vehicle it was supposed to be chasing. On June the 15th of 2023, an officer found a car that was reported stolen out of nearby Kent County and attempted to initiate a traffic stop, but the driver took off, prompting a high-speed chase. You good, bro? A second patrol car containing two officers was dispatched to help pursue the suspect, but while trying to locate the pursuit, they accidentally T-boned the suspect's vehicle, sending it flying into a building yards away. The two suspects, who were juveniles, and the two officers were subsequently rushed to the hospital. The officers have since been discharged, but there's been no update on the suspects. While that was a genuine accident, this next officer almost got into a crash just by trying to pit this humongous truck. On January the 8th of 2023, officers attempted to perform a traffic stop on a dually pickup truck, but it failed to yield to their lights and sirens. The driver was later identified as 53-year-old Michael Helton. <laughs> Six 
67 Little Rock, number 1037, I'm primary. location.
truck's large wheels had made it nearly impossible for the officer to successfully pit the vehicle, escalating the danger was the fact that Michael was intermittently firing his gun outside the car window. Up ahead, officers devised a plan to use stop sticks to damage the truck's tires and make it easier to neutralize. Guys, I see you coming. I got spikes across the whole road. Get the room. Good pass. Yeah, we're going around us. All right, guys, you're coming up on my spikes. After sustaining massive damage to his tires, Michael stopped on the side of the road and exited his vehicle, waving his firearm around as the police gave him lawful orders to surrender. In response, the officers fired several shots at him, and despite receiving emergency aid, Michael died before the paramedics could arrive. If you enjoyed this video, watch this one, and don't forget to subscribe.